2009 was a very important time in YouTube history. In the early days of this website, most people thought of it as a place to watch funny one-off content. But four years in, there started to become a class of YouTubers that made consistent quality videos. The thing that makes 2009 so special though, was the very important milestone of a YouTuber passing 1 million subscribers was finally reached. And the person that did it was... Fred. Hey, it's Fred! And it's really nice out, so I think I'm gonna go swimming later. My mom found this really cool pool at the dump. So how on earth did that become the biggest thing on the entire website? And why don't we hear about Fred anymore? Well, today I plan on answering both of those questions. First, I should explain to people what this Fred character was, because it's been quite some time since he was popular. The character was created by a guy named Lucas, a teenager who started making YouTube videos with his cousins. On their channel, he invented Fred, a high-pitched little kid that ended up getting involved in all sorts of shenanigans. As this character began outshining everything else in their combined channel, Lucas moved Fred over to his very own account, where he would become one of the biggest sensations of the 2000s. Most people believe that this series was specifically made for little kids, but reading the plot synopsis, you start to realize that it's pretty dark. Fred lives with his recovering drug-addicted and alcoholic prostitute mother, whose deep voice is often heard and his grandmother. It is implied that Fred has been the victim of child abuse, for example, being locked in a dog cage for three days. However, he frequently speaks of his love of his mother, particularly after her stay in rehab. Fred's father is also mentioned several times as being on death row. Looking at it now, that's actually a decent idea for a series about a happy-go-lucky kid who doesn't realize just how terrible his life really is but back in the day, I could just simply never get past his voice. For the first time ever, I actually sat myself down and tried to force myself to watch some of these Fred videos, and I still don't get it. Even back in the day, I remember having conversation with other kids my age, and everybody kind of agreed that Fred was annoying, but someone must have been watching this stuff. Regardless of what my opinions on the series were, he was popular and Hollywood started knocking at his door seeing if they could find a way to make money off this online sensation. And they did with him eventually signing a contract with Nickelodeon. In 2010, he landed this deal to bring his character to the television station in a variety of different projects with them. This included the now infamous trilogy of Fred movies, which have been covered by plenty of other YouTubers at this point, and I really don't have much to add. The only one of these three that I've seen is the first one, and honestly, it is pretty terrible, I do agree with that. But I will defend it in one regard. Someone at Nickelodeon knew that they had to tone down this character for a feature-length film, and they did, so he is less annoying. I was invited to be here. I'm a party-goer. Therefore, you're my host. So, if you wouldn't mind, could you get me a Coke, please? He was just so over the top and high pitched in those early videos that they had to tone it down if they were going to fill in a 90 minute segment about this character. So in that regard, it kinda did work. Besides the John Cena cameo in the movie, it's really not worth anyone's time and the consensus seems to be the same with the other two movies. But on top of these three movies though, he also had two television series which I think a lot of people forgot about. First was Fred the Show, which as far as I can tell was just more of the same thing. To be honest, I haven't bothered watching an episode of it because, well, I already watched the first movie and that was enough for me. This Fred TV show appeared to not do very well considering it was cancelled after only one season. But Nick still wanted to give Lucas one more try. With this, Marvin Marvin was made, a multi-camera sitcom where Lucas plays an alien disguised as a human. Yet again though, the show failed, which I assume because it wasn't very good. I know I'm going to get a ton of comments saying that I should relax because it's just a kid's show, but you know what? No, I'm not. There's plenty of quality children's entertainment out there, such as Over the Garden Wall, Gravity Falls, and even the new movie Coco that just came out. So the idea that this cannot be criticized because it was not made specifically for me is just not an excuse. After three movies and two shows, Lucas ended his career on Nickelodeon. And this correlates with when Fred kind of fell off the map. Since the character went mainstream, YouTube had changed, with a new generation of content creators emerging, with Fred continuously getting knocked down the most subscribed chart. As time went on, Lucas started to step away from the Fred character, 
But since he had such a large subscriber base, there was a push to restructure the channel, to have a variety of brand new series aimed at kids. These new shows didn't have much to do with the original Fred Vision, but instead just tried to keep the channel running without Lucas having to be involved. To my surprise while researching this video, I found out that one of these shows that replaced Fred was called In Your Face, run by a very young Jake Paul. What's up guys, welcome back to In Your Face, I'm Jake Paul and uh, <laughs> trick ya, I'm just kidding. Oh. Excuse me, um, do you wanna pie your mom in the face? Don't run, please, don't run. These videos are nothing to make fun about. It's just a very simple premise of the parents and kids asking each other questions and the winner gets to pie the other one in the face. But it's just kind of funny how you stumble upon Jake Paul in the most random of places. Along with this, they made a ton of other series and a lot of the time, I'm not even sure what they were going for. Sometimes it was just flat out bizarre content. I am Finn, the human boy, and this is my friend Jake, the dog. Hey Jake, what are you doing? I'm meditating, I'm meditating. Trying to connect with the internet with my brain. After many failed attempts at finding content that truly stuck and was worth the cost and effort to produce, the Fred channel was finally abandoned in 2015. Since then, not a single thing has been uploaded onto it, and the Fred website is now redirected to a home decor shop for some reason. I think it's crazy that you could build up a YouTube channel to be the biggest on the site just for it to fall dormant like this. I understand why they stopped making content for it, but you'd think that they'd be able to find at least something to make it profitable. To this very day, it pulls in millions of views a month just on kids finding out about it and watching the back catalog of videos. Now, what was once the biggest channel on all of YouTube lays dead, a shell of what was at one point some of the most popular content on the entire internet, making way for the trend of giving creators TV and movie deals that would almost always fail. Was Fred good entertainment? No, but I don't think that his contributions to this industry have anything to do with the quality of his videos. It's crazy to think that Lucas just stumbled upon all this success leading him to be one of the first big internet celebrities. And it's not like he could have just gone and Googled all this information. He was the first one to do this stuff. While we're already talking about him, I figure I might as well take a minute to take a look at the career of Lucas after the Fred persona. And he's actually done pretty decent for himself. The account he's now currently running mostly has vlogs on it and he's gotten over two and a half million subscribers. So he's not doing that bad. I also have to give him props for coming up with some pretty interesting video ideas, such as his series where he rents something or hires somebody for the day that's unusual. This one he actually goes and he gets himself a Taylor Swift impersonator. <laughs> Actually, no, that's kind of weird. The most interesting videos, at least in my opinion on his channel, are the ones where he actually goes back and reflects on his years of playing the Fred character. This gives you a lot of cool insight on what was going through his head at the time when making these videos. They're located in what you humans refer to as the butt. <laughs> the movie was supposed to be our sacred. <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm closer. <laughs> Okay, going to work out. Oh boy, there'll always be a record of me bent over pointing at my butt for life. I definitely suggest everyone go back and check out some of his reaction videos to his old Fred content. He doesn't take himself too seriously and it is pretty interesting. While Lucas may not be the big star he once was, hopefully he saved his money from back in the day and he could live off it for the rest of his life. While making this video, I came to the realization that there are a lot of kids out there that have no recollection of the Fred character because they are simply too young. When looking at more recent posts about Fred on the internet, you see a lot of younger people responding that they never heard of him, which makes me realize that YouTubers from the early days are going to start feeling old soon, which is kind of crazy to think about. Hey everybody and thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. As for the question of the day, somebody wants to know, have I gotten anything for Black Friday or Cyber Monday? And the answer to that question is surprisingly no. This may be the first year that I could recall where I didn't buy a single thing for Black Friday or Cyber Monday, and it kind of comes down to me not needing anything. Most of the stuff that I do buy is almost always a tax write-off at this point, whether it be for my computer or for my video equipment, 
and all that stuff I could write off on my taxes. But other than that, there's not much I really need. That's actually a really good place to be in as a YouTuber because since this platform is so unstable and you don't know if your ad revenue is just going to drop to nothing overnight, it's good to have everything saved up and not blowing every last penny you have. I see some YouTubers that live paycheck to paycheck and I have no idea how they could do that. I'm constantly stressed over YouTube and I have a decent amount of savings, but seeing other YouTubers that have absolutely nothing to their name, I, I don't know how they do it. How could you even live like that? So anyway, the moral of the story is if you're a YouTuber, save all your money because you don't know how long this gig is going to last for. And I think I'll end the video here. So until next time guys, thanks for watching.